Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. I'm so glad you're here. I really want to make some industrial art. I think that it can be quite beautiful and it fits in a boho or modern setting, not just an industrial setting. I love the juxtaposition of organic materials with metallic, and I love the inclusion of modern and Scandi styles in industrial art. Let's go have some fun. To start, I'm going to use this Storage Essentials wire basket, which I got from the Dollar Tree. And you can see it is about 12 and a half inches by nine inches. But for this project, you could use any sort of metal frame or basket. For example, you could use one of these square wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap some of this Floral Garden nautical rope. This is the jute or brown colored nautical rope that you can get at the Dollar Tree around the two ends of the basket. What I want is to have something with a lot of friction that we can tie our warp threads to. The rope is eight feet long, so this is the thicker rope that they sell at the Dollar Tree, and I did not use the entire eight feet of the rope. So I'm basically going to wrap the rope or coil the rope around each end of the basket, but I need to affix it to the basket. So what I'm going to do is use the rope whipping technique to attach the end of the rope to the side of the basket near the top. So to do that, first of all, I'm going to take off the tape that's on the rope. And then I'm just going to lie the rope, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, down along the top of the basket on the side. And I'm going to whip it with some jute twine because I wanted to whip it with something that was basically the same color. But you could use anything to do this. You could use string or some of the yarn that we're later going to weave with. And you cut a length of the twine, make a loop at the end of the twine, and point the loop towards the top of the basket and the end of the loop towards the bottom of the basket, and then begin winding around the loop. Make sure there's a, a little end sticking out. And once you get close to the top of the loop, poke your jute through the loop and then pull it under with the end of the twine. And then you can pull both ends to make it tight. Now I find this jute is not very strong, so don't pull too hard um, because you might break the jute, but pull it fairly tight so that it's holding that rope tightly against the basket. And once that's attached to the side of the basket, then I just wound the rope around the basket from one side of the top of the basket to the other. And then I did the whipping technique again on the other end. So I just cut the rope and whipped the end with another piece of jute twine. And then you can cut off those ends of the jute twine when you're done. And I did this to both ends of the basket. So with that done, I wanted to use jute as my warp. So I took a length of jute and I took lengths of jute, which were going to leave a lot of jute hanging off the bottom of the basket because I wasn't sure yet what I was going to do with this basket. I knew I wanted to do some sort of industrial weaving, but I wasn't sure exactly what it was going to look like. It was fun to sort of put it together as I went along. So I cut them very long, but they didn't need to be that long because in the end, I didn't keep the sort of tails on the jute, but what I did was a lark's head at the top. So I made a loop with the jute and then put the jute under the basket, under the rope, and then pulled the two tails through. But one of the tails is short and the other tail is long. The long tail is going to be the warp. The short tail is just sort of decorative. And then I tied a knot around the bottom and I tried to make that straight at first I measured them and then I sort of gave up on measuring because I thought it wouldn't matter that much and I would just try to get it even. So I'm using the rope because of the friction of the rope to hold the warp threads in place. The rope is, is really nice and rough. And so when we tie the jute around it, it holds pretty well. And you wanna get those warp threads nice and tight. So just continue adding those warp threads all the way across the basket. And eventually I got to doing this more assembly line style where I put the warp threads on the top. And then once I had them all across the top, I pulled them down to the bottom and tied them around the bottom. Once you have the warp threads, 
now we can start weaving. So I wanted to have a nice thick off-white yarn for a lot of this weaving and I had some of this yarn left over from my very first knitting project which was a pillow and it's Bernat softy chunky yarn and the color is natural and I will include a link to this in the description. I really love this yarn and I may end up buying more of it at some point because this is all I have left. And I'm just cutting a length of that about, I don't know, 50 inches or so, and I'm just going to start weaving. So I'm putting that on a yarn needle and then just over, under, over, under to weave it. Now I'm going to try some of the techniques that I saw on the Spruce and Linen website to prevent my weaving from pulling the warp threads in. And I'm somewhat successful, but not completely successful. So I do need to continue to practice this, maybe rewatch those videos and try again. But what I'm doing is pulling the yarn through and then pushing it down in the middle and then pushing it down halfway between the middle and each side before I then push it all down towards the end. And then grabbing those warp threads at the end and sort of pulling them out a little bit to try to prevent it from being too tight and pulling them in. And so I'm just going to go back and forth with this white yarn um, until I run out of the yarn. So there's no specific measurement here, just a, a little bit of white at the top. And I do try to trim the ends and weave in as I go along because of course it's very hard to get to the back of this work because it's sort of a, inside a basket. But you'll see later with some of the threads that I use for weft, um, I tie them to the bottom of the basket. And I, I think that if I were going to do this again, I might do that with all of them. And that's just because, again, it's very hard to weave in and get at the back of the work. Plus, this is a sort of three-dimensional frame that we're weaving on. And I think if we don't sort of relate back to the back of the frame, we're losing an opportunity to make this a three-dimensional weaving. So here I have some yarn from the Dollar Tree. It's called Just Yarn and the color is Rust Tweed. I love this color and thinking back to my inspiration photos, the tweed just sort of reminded me of the clothing that some of the workers in the mills were wearing. So once I did that one brown stripe, I just went back to the off-white and I did another sort of thick layer of the off-white. Now, with that done, I thought it would be fun to do something a little different, and I have this Just Yarn Charcoal Tweed, again, from the Dollar Tree, and I also have some wool roving, and I bought this at a museum, but I'm going to put a link in the description of some wool roving that you could buy on Amazon if you wanted this. And so I took five lengths of the charcoal tweed, each five inches long, and then just a little bit of the wool roving, and held them together and then tied a lark's head with those around each of the warp threads. And you can see this gives a really cool fringe. Now the five inch length, that's a little bit short. It was a little tricky tying a lark's head with those five strands, only five inches long. So a little bit longer might be a little easier to tie. And then once I had all of the warp threads covered with one of these lark's head knots each, I pulled the wool roving up a little bit so it was out of the way, and I trimmed just any pieces that were a little bit too long, and then I pulled the wool roving down. And again, if I'm going to relate this back to the photos, there's one photo in a cotton mill where you can just see all kinds of like strands of cotton up in the rafters of the mill. I imagine it was just sort of in the air and everywhere, and I wanted to get that look here in this weaving. The next row of the weaving is just another chunk of the off-white. And after the off-white, which is partly underneath that fringe of the charcoal and wool roving, because I started it right up against the lark's head knots, I'm going to do some more rust tweed. But what I'm going to do now is loop it under the bottom of this basket. So I doubled up the yarn 
and I did a lark's head knot on the leftmost warp thread. And then I did an over under pattern, but every time I came to where I was near one of those pieces of metal on the basket below, I went down, looped around the piece of metal on the basket and came back up those vertical pieces of metal. So it, it gives just kind of a cool look. And once we finish the weaving on the front, you won't be able to see it, but you can see it from the side where it links back to the bottom of the basket. And at the end, what I did was I just tied it to one of those vertical pieces of metal at the bottom. And eventually I just um, snipped that yarn. I wasn't sure if that's what I was going to do at first. And then I went back and did another chunk of white rose. Now this next bit might seem a little crazy, but I just loved the look. I have this black nonstick shelf liner, which I got at the Dollar Tree, and I really love the pattern on it. I think I used it last year on some Easter eggs to paint them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a two inch strip of this. So I just trimmed off the end of it so I had a nice straight edge and then cut it at two inches. And I'm going to fold it over and I am going to sew it closed because I tried to do it without sewing it closed and it kept getting unfolded or you know the fold would become uneven. So I just used some black thread and sewed it together. But I think you could probably glue it. I would just worry about glue being visible because it has that sort of open pattern. And I also have a thin piece of the mesh wire or hardware fabric that I used when I made the Moroccan lanterns. This is left over. It's a bit of a lantern that I cut off. And this piece was originally sort of a silver color, but it's been painted with the chocolate brown paint. And I'll include a link to that in the description in case you're interested. So what I did was I threaded the grip liner through and then I threaded the metal through over that and it was a little tricky because it's sticky and the jute is sticky so I ended up putting some paint sticks through just to hold half the warp threads up and then I was able to slide it in a little more easily. I then wrapped the ends around the sides of the basket and sewed it to the side of the basket and I did like that and I wished after I had done that, that I had done the entire weaving all the way across the basket. So at this point, you could go symmetrical. I'm about in the middle of this basket. And you could do a symmetrical piece where you go white, brown, white, and then fringe, and then white, brown, white. But I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I took the rust yarn and some jute, and I wove them together underneath the black and metal. Once I had done that, I went back with another row of white and then one row of the brown or rust and then some more white. Now I'm going to finish this off with a fringe because it's going to be tricky to get right down to the bottom of those warp threads, but if we put a fringe, it'll give it a nice finish. So what I decided to do was alternate some basically brown and some of the charcoal. And what I did was, for the brown ones, I have five strands of the rust and one strand of jute and one strand of the chunky off-white. And these are a little longer. I cut these to eight inches this time. And that was much easier to thread through and tie a lark's head with. So that's every other. And then the alternating ones, I did five strands of the charcoal and tied a lark's head. But then what I did was I took an eight inch piece of gold florist's wire. I did a lark's head around the bottom of that and then squished it up so that it made like a little bubble sort of at the top. So those are sort of rounded. And then I just pulled the gold down towards the bottom. And I wanted to do some wire here to relate it back to that piece in the middle. And so finally to finish this off, 
I just cut those warp threads that I had been holding onto at the bottom because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. And I left a tiny little tail on them in case, I don't know, the knots became loose and I felt like I would have to tighten them. So I just pulled up my fringe, cut them, and then brought my fringe back down. And here it is, here's the finished weaving. So what did you think of our industrial weaving? Please tell me in the comments. I really enjoyed making it because it was fun to include different elements in the weaving and it was fun to have that sort of three-dimensional shape to work with. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.